gang, today we are taking a look at Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Voyager Class Grimwing. Now, Grimwing is packaged in robot mode, so that is where we are going to start, and he also comes with this little launcher thingy that's actually another little Transformer. It goes by the name of Blackbeak, and it is a kind of a grappling hook launcher. So it actually has a cable that you unwind here on the back, like that, and then you put this little piece back, and then you push the launcher forward. Uh, okay, let's try that again. And you push the launcher forward! And it does nothing! Really, it doesn't go very far. It just kind of shoots maybe an inch or two out of the mouth. It's done. It seems like Hasbro is not bothering with springs on any of its toys anymore, which is unfortunate. Overall, though, I like the look of Blackbeak. It is a little cool thing, and the actual grappling hook looks like its own little creature. I'm going to call him Steve. And this uh, little weapon grappling hook thing can be mounted on a variety of different spots on Grimwing. On his back in robot mode, on his arms in robot mode... There are, there, I thought there were little holes, yep, there are holes on the inside of the legs that are screw holes where the pin can fit. But normally you just want to pose it on his arms or in his hands, he can carry it. However, I have noticed an interesting little problem with this, is this peg is just a trifle bit too small for the peg holes. And I've had him pose it where he's had his arm up like this, and the weight of the of uh, Blackbeat just swings it down and has it pointing to the ground. A very funny little problem. So we've taken a look at Blackbeat. Let's put him off to the side. Whoops. I want to start off by saying that Grimwing looks really cool in robot mode. I very much like this robot mode. Now Grimwing is an Ursa Griff. An Ursa Griff is a griffin with the body of a bear. So we'll take a look at the beast mode here in a bit. So he's not technically a dragon. Overall, the, as I said, the, the robot mode looks really nice and is very well proportioned. I very much like the robot mode. The only real issue I have with the figure in general, other than some issues we'll talk about later, is I wish the wings could weren't just one solid piece. I wish I could splay them out instead of just lifting out these little green pieces. That would be very nice, but oh well. Another p weird thing is he has these knees that are double jointed but nowhere in the directions does it say to actually use the double knee it's very strange well we'll talk about that in a bit so overall the figure looks great but holds together terribly there is nothing pinning his upper body together so part of the transformation is lifting this whole section out of his chest well there's nothing pegging anything in it's almost as if the designers forgot that he's supposed to be able to hold together in beast or in a robot mode. So as soon as you pick him up, he starts parts start falling apart and things just start flailing around and you lose the look of robot mode really quickly. And it breaks the illu the overall illusion just instantly. And that is a problem. I mean, that is just bad engineering and bad design. I think they were trying to put there is a, sp a bit right here inside the torso that looks like a peg is supposed to peg into it. And I would bet you that there was a peg supposed to be right here on the head. Now that looks like it's been, something's been removed from the plastic. It's probably just the runner, but it looks like it's supposed to peg in there. Or there's supposed to be a peg inside the beak. Because as you can see, there's this little piece that looks like it should snap in somewhere, and I've been wondering if that was supposed to peg in here, but unfortunately, nothing pegs into that spot, so you're left with a figure that, as long as you don't start playing with him, he looks very cool. Head sculpt is really neat. It's not that detailed, but it works really well, plus the eyes being that bright yellow, the scowl on his face. I mean, they did a really good job painting this figure. I think the only thing I would add would maybe to take a very tiny little brush or very tiny little marker and just give him some pupils. Other than that, the head sculpt is fantastic. Grim Grimwing's posability is affected slightly by the back 
wings. They are somewhat heavy, but they can pose. You can have them straight back, or you can have them up against his body. Head is on a ball joint. It gets some a little bit of movement up and down. It is very tight. Shoulders are on a swi a two swivels. So you have a swivel for forward and back and a swivel for in and out. But as you can see, as soon as you start moving the figure, his uh, entire side will start moving as well. There is this shoulder guard that can fold all the way up in robot mode or in beast mode. Now, the directions say in both modes, keep it just angled like this. But actually in robot mode, I kind of like it where his where his shoulder guards actually form his shoulders. I like that. I like that look. There's a swivel underneath the shoulder joint and an elbow that bends at 90 degrees. Underneath that is another swivel for the forearm. And then there's a swivel at the hands and, an, and um, posability at the thumb and at the wrist. For the hips, there is two swivels. That looks like it should be a ratchet, but it isn't. So you've got a swivel for back and forth and a swivel for front and back. Another swivel just underneath that. That double knee that we were talking about earlier. So he's got a pin hinge here and one here. And these are kind of ratcheting joints. And you would think that it would be used in one of the modes, but it really isn't. It's not shown to be used at all in the directions. It looks okay in robot mode, but it does affect some posability and weight distribution. So I generally leave it as collapse, but it really looks best or works best in robot mode. So I'm wondering if this is supposed to be used in robot mode. Then for the leg, for the feet, there is a, a, a snapping hinge there that the foot is connected to that it's supposed to be, I think, down in robot mode and forward in beast mode. And then the feet are on ball joints. With the knees stretched out, you can see the Grimwing is going to be just a little bit taller than Predaking. Though I really like the combination of color schemes we have here. We have the orange, black, and gold for Predaking, and then the gray, lime green, and darkish green for for uh, Grimwing. I just I, I like the contrast of these two figures. With the knees collapsed, you can see the Grimwing is about the same size as Predaking, maybe just a hair shorter thanks to the uh, spike on the top of Predaking's head. I'm really kind of curious as to why Grimwing has those extra knees or that extra knee joint when, even in the directions, they don't even say to use it. And I think I've got a mistransform. There we go. So, he, just, it's an odd figure, and I'm kind of questioning why those knees are there because they're rather, they're a little bit useless in, um, in beast mode. So I think they were meant to be deployed in robot mode. Either way, with them deployed or not deployed, he looks good in robot mode. Grimwing's transformation is very, very easy. To start, take these chest pieces and simply fold them down. Then take the entire main unit of the figure and lift it up and unpeg the wings and fold them back. Then we can take the head and swivel that around into the neck of his beast mode and fold the beast head up. Straighten out the beast head, fold the shoulder panels down until they kind of click, then bring the beast head forward and kind of fold up the neck so that the round, these round shoulder bits will fit into the base of the beast head and neck. There we go. Now those peg into place, and then drop the wings down onto these pe onto uh, these pegs right here. So peg that in, and I like to fold the wings and just get them up out of the way. For the forearms, for the front arms, bring them forward, and then put them straight down and grab the uh, elbow and turn the swivel so that the outer, the longer arm guard or elbow guard is pointing behind the elbow and then twist the hand around and bring it forward for beast, for a more beast look. And do the same thing over here. Just turn it so that the, uh, the also you could say that the hole that holds a uh, black beak is pointing towards the back of the figure. Flip out the thumb, and there we have the front of the beast mode. For the rear, fold the legs up, and then at the shins, they will fold out or the feet will fold out from the from the uh, back of the leg. Take the heels and fold them up along the back of those parts, 
And then I like to just snap the feet forward to give us more of a beast look. And then fold the wings down, flip out these little green pieces. And then if you want, you can attach black beak to the back. Oh, and one last thing for the transformation. Grab this uh, hip, grab the hips and pull out. Yeah, pull out like, uh, what, an eighth of an inch? Now be wary, this does not snap into place. So this, is gonna, this slides back and forth with no real resistance. So here we have Grimwing in beast mode, in Ursagriff mode. And I like the look of Grimwing, I really do. I don't like the look of Grimwing with Blackbeak sitting on his back. I just, I don't. Overall though, I like the beast mode. Unfortunately, this is the most Cheetor-esque of the transformations where you're literally just standing him up, fiddling with the legs, fiddle with the torso, just a bit, and that's it. But overall, he looks good. I like the color scheme. Now. The Takara version of this has been announced. Its name escapes me. It's something crazy, but it is in a orange and red, fire red color scheme. So that's going to be interesting to see. But overall, I like the look of this figure in both modes. In both modes, I think he looks very cool. Unfortunately, he is not a very good figure. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is he's just floppy and and doesn't stay together or just isn't fun to deal with this figure just isn't fun to play with i'm sorry it it isn't it the transformation is okay it looks good in both modes i think the robot mode is much stronger than the beast mode but it's not a fun figure if that makes any sense it's just kind of the problems with the figure outweigh any fun and I'm kind of getting tired of the falling down on all fours to make a dragon mode. I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of that. Pretty much all of the Predacons, save for Predaking, is that aesthetic or that design language. It's, it, it, looks good in, it looks good in robot mode. That is the best thing I could say about it. It looks okay in beast mode. So guys, I really can't recommend this one. Um... It's not a bad figure, it's not broken, but it doesn't stay together all that well. You're not going to have the best time with this figure, I don't think, but if you're just planning on put, keeping it in robot mode and just having it posed and once you got it, not touching it, you'll be fine. Otherwise, you're in for some headaches. So guys, catch you next time. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you later. What are you doing? Uh, chickens. Wow. Wait, chickens? Wait, when did we have? Wait, 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 what? Where did we get chickens? Where are they? <laughs> Those aren't chickens, you know. What are you talking about? Of course they're chickens. I. Oh, I see what you did there. Nice.